the rest of you people know why. I would like him to take over this business. Some place things will all be yours. So in this sense, everything about, about property is going to be subject to the final decision, the yes or no decision of what's going to happen to it. The question becomes one of, is that person going to be you as a self owning person, or is it going to be the state? And it's really all it ever comes down to. I'm sorry to anything if this is still buy into the idea of this such a complicated world, we could never understand that. We better let the judges and lawyers and people like that figure that out for us. No, that's, that's the question. Do you or someone else get to make that decision? Well, Personal, personal 
benefit, or secondly, out of perhaps a sense of community. And I, I, I think we have kind of lost that. The sense that there's somebody. Bill, was that for you? Here you are. Right here. Moment of life is so simple as you outlined it, and I agree with you, it is. Why do we human beings continue to make it so complicated? How, how, can, how can we help others understand the simplicity that you're, you're explaining to us today about property rights, what property is, and who gets to make the decision? You know, that kind of how, how do we get people to understand that concept? Yeah, I, I, and I said earlier that I think one of the most um, unappreciated of people who contributed to this whole field of libertarian thought was Leonard Reed. Um, by today's standards, if you read any of what Leonard uh, wrote, I mean, basically would come across kind of as a conservative. But he was a rather profound, much deeper individual than that. And one of the things that he did, he wrote a book titled uh, Elements of Libertarian Leadership. And he said that the best way to promote any values or thinking and so forth that you have is to be the kind of person that your values reflect. In other words, if you're up on a soapbox all the time, you know, telling other people how they should be doing things, um, you know, people kind of stay away from that. Ernie had a really good presentation yesterday. I mean, you said that the power of one, I didn't really like that. That title like that, I thought that would be a good one to use on behalf of Bradley Manning, the guy who gave this information to WikiLeaks. Remember the old army? They can join the army in the army of one. Okay, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, promise. But, but I think it may become a matter of doing the things that are of value to you, that are important to you, and letting other people see, you know, you should live in with integrity. And that's basically, basically, I, I've been, I've always been a great fan of the psychologist, psychiatrist, late psychiatrist, Carl Jung. We always put emphasis on living the centered life, living with integrity. Integrity meaning to be integrated. You're not living in a matter of contradiction. You're not saying one thing one time and the next thing you're saying something else. Dan, yeah, so you have any questions for that? Uh, so you've been talking about uh, actual physical property you can put your hands on. Uh, Including that. Uh, what about uh, intellectual property? Can you, can you own an idea in somebody else's head? I don't think so. I, I'm, I'm very <laughs> I'm very troubled by the whole idea of intellectual property. And maybe one of the, I didn't have a chance to get into what Jane was asking the question about. Um, a lot of the things that ought not to be owned, in my view, are things that come from the state. Um, patents, copyrights, monopolies, I'm not going to, by the way, if you look at the ancient definition of what was a grant given by the king to be the exclusive, exclusive seller or something of some particular product or service. Anything that comes from the state, including state property, I don't accept the idea that the state can own anything. Just, just, just think it through. What does it mean to own anything? If I, if I own this pen, what does it mean to own that pen? This is something I need in furtherance of my right to be a self-owning person. In other words, if I want to do a lot of writing, you know, I can, I can do that. So our, whatever property rights you or I have derive from ultimately our sense of self-ownership. Does the government have a, is it a self-owning entity? It's a fiction. Wow, well they act like that, don't they? Maybe that's one area we ought to Begin question. See, this is this is why the institutional order doesn't like these issues presented as property questions. Because you know, we start asking questions around organized around the property question. Who, who knows what they're going to ask next? Well, wait a minute. If I have a property right to do myself in. What about the right not to be taxed? Isn't that an intrusion on my sense of self? And all along, you can just go to work. Is there a good, hard, fast rule for how, how private ownership?
was first established. I mean, if you and I land on the planet Mars and I say, I own that rock, can you say, well, no, you don't, right? I mean, obviously, obviously we have some, some conflict here that's not as clear as the case of you owning your car. I mean, is there, is there a good, hard, and fast rule for how that ought to be resolved just academically? You, you mean in a, in a free society? Yes. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I, well, let me, let me rephrase that. I think that in a, in a stateless free society, the strength of any property claims I make will depend upon the willingness of my neighbors to come to their defense. Now, let, let's suppose we all end up on an island someplace. And um, we know we're going to be there for a very long time. We have to the scout around the island early and early to find where the trees are that can be used to build something. And I go look someplace else and I find the fresh water supply. I say, ooh, I hear my late favorite the fresh water supply. There's no other fresh water supply on this island. Um, and so I take control of it and I start exercising my, my sovereignty, if you will, over my water by exchanging it with you for something that that you want, or something like that. I might want to hurt some of Bernie's trees here, build a, build a shelter. Will the rest of you support me on that? It will depend on how I deal with it. Doesn't it? It's another market transaction. If you, if you view me as having control of the water, an important resource, and using it in a way that benefits, benefits others, instead of just being a Thank you. 